Hi, so um, after showing you how you can work with um, data visualization on Python, um, where we did the matplot, we use the matplotlib library to do a lot of stuff. I let me just remove this guy. Okay, I want to show you how you can do basic file handling. Okay, on Python. Now Python has um, Python. It's, it's very easy to work with files. When I say files, basically any kind of files. Okay, this is my working directory. What we're going to start by doing is we are going to start by creating a text file here from our Python environment. And then maybe we will write data to it. And after we write data to it, we will read from it, stuff like that. So stuff like that usually come in handy when you're working with, um, when you want to make your data persistent. Okay, so let's just, let's just start and then hopefully you will get it. So we are going to create a new file. Just comment here. Create, why is it in caps? Create a new text file or a new file. Let me just say file like this. And to create a file, you just say open. You use the open function, okay? And then you give it the name of the file you want to open, okay? Um, this function is very robust. It works in such a way that you can make it open a pre-existing file or you can make it create a, a, a non-existing file. So let's say we want to create a file called database, okay? Yeah, database txt all right now it's going to work with our working directory let me just comment this out and run this let me show you something okay so this is my file uh, working directory is going to looking at this directory there's no text file here but if i say open this database.txt and i give it a mode in which i want it to open so i say open it as um so currently it doesn't exist if it existed, I would have just opened it as either a read mode or a write mode or an append mode or a binary mode or whatever. But in this case, I'm going to open it as a non-existing file. Okay, so I can open it. If I use X, it means create it if it doesn't exist. All right. If I say X and plus, it means create it if it doesn't exist and open it with a read and write permissions. Or permission okay so for now let's just open it like this and i'll call it maybe let me call it db database like this okay so this way you realize that if i run it well it says nothing happened but why is this graph still um i need to comment out everybody here ideally i'm supposed to create a new file for it but i don't want you to lose all the files i want you to have all the files all the code in one file so i'm putting it all together in one okay so now that it has run and you come here you see that there's a database.txt file here okay currently it's empty because we didn't put anything inside it we just opened it we didn't do anything to it okay so imagine if i run it again what will happen oops we get an error right and what error do we have file exists already Okay, so file exists um, error. So what happens here is this is the best place to use the try and um, try and accept statement. So you say try and open this file. Okay, and in this case you can just catch a general exception. Okay, but I for working with files I prefer to catch this particular um, exception. So I'll be expecting to catch a file exists error. So that if I have a file exist error, I'll just open it again. So I'll just open it again. This time, it means it already exists. So I can open it, let's say, in in um, in a read mode or in a write mode. So let's open. So sorry. So open this file, the same file. Okay. It means it already exists. So I'm not going to create a new file. I'm just going to open it again. Except this time, I'm going to open it in, let's say, in a write mode. Okay or append mode i prefer append mode okay and yeah that's it so if it exists just open a new file like this and then open it in the append mode and then at the bottom of it i'll say db.close like this so that it means when i'm done with whatever i need to do 
it i'll just close it so whatever i need to do i'll just do it inside here okay so if you run it again this time you see that you don't get such an error because you've handled it you've handled the crashing error so it doesn't crash anymore so let's say we want to append something to it let's try to add um um so good this is a good time to point out how useful um text files or file handling is um, first of all apart from retrieving data and using them you can make you add, add it to your simple console um app okay so remember while we we're learning the while loop we we did something about um, getting the number of the ages of students in a class and saving them onto a list well in this time the list the, that time the list was not persistent it was not um it did, uh, how do i say when we were done running the code the list became empty but now you can have a persistent data okay so in such a way that even when you close your python your data will still be stored somewhere and whenever you need it you just reopen it and read from it okay so that's what i want us to do so i want us to get there so let me give you the scenario assume we have 10 students in our class and we want to get the list of ages of these 10 students and put them onto a database in this case we are using our text file as our database all right so i've already opened it in this case okay so um if you already think i i only gave you the structure so that you would uh, understand how everything works over here you you can apply the finally here sorry finally here okay you can apply the finally here so that you try this if it doesn't work it will come to this but at the end of the day it must run this code so it always try to close it but if you are satisfied with what's happening i'll just bring this guy down here so that i'll do it in the style okay okay good so i'm going to open my file as a, as an append in an append mode calling it db and i'm going to start applying data to it but before i do that i'm going to assume if we have 10 students okay so i'm going to say students equals 10 all right and i'm going to say well so if i open my database while um students students which is 10 right now all students is greater than zero which means they're all going to come and they're going to be inputting their names okay all students is greater than zero gets the student age right so i'll say age equals to input um input what student age like this right or oh, just make it like this student age yeah. okay student age like this okay so input get the student's age whilst it's less than um whilst 10 is greater than zero get the student's age after that you reduce the student number by um one because each of the students is going to come and whenever they come and input their age you're going to reduce their number by one until they are left until it's zero okay so when it's zero it means students is no more greater than zero all right so now that you have the student age what will you do with it i'll just append it to my database so in this case let me just put a comment here writing to a text file okay so I'm just showing you how to do these things so that you not struggle with them. So I'll say db.write, db.write, okay. And I will put, I think I'll use uh, a formatted string. So db.write, student age, student age, then I'll pass in the student age like this, okay. And I'll move to a next space. Like that's hopefully that should work so db.write then i'll put in the string i want to put inside in this case only that i'm passing the student age into the string so it will appear like this so db.write student age like this and there you go i think that's all right mm -hmm. that's all so when it's done we can say db.close okay when it's done we can say db.close and then so it's going to ask us for students age so I'll say 12 23 um okay there you go so it has asked us for 10 numbers i believe and um 
it should have added the data to this guy there you go student age 12 23 so if you have doubts you can see that it's coinciding with what we have here all right you can see that it's coinciding with what we have here so basically it gets the data from the user and adds it to this text file so you see that this text file is serving as a persistent data holder or a data structure let me put it in that way okay it's persistent so even if i should close my console and everything i will still have my data all right so this one way of doing it you can create a text file you can create a csv file um in this case if the csv file doesn't exist then uh you create a new one okay so you can create a csv file like this let me put a plus to it when i add a plus it means i'm adding a read and write permissions to it okay so for now i know it doesn't exist so i can just run it without putting inside a try catch statement so if i run it like this the csv file doesn't exist so let's run it in this case let me reduce the number of students from 10 to 5 so that i don't punch in so many numbers and when I run it again, it's going to ask me for the first student, 54. Wow, that's an old student. Um, okay, five students. Okay, so you can use it on a CSV too. As you can see, um, the CSV is found here. And you can see that the data is also here. It works in the same way, five numbers. All right. So that's how you can write to a CSV or um, let me just return it to... Uh, a text file okay text file all right so that's how it works now let's say we want to read so i'm just going to comment this out mostly file handling is done on scripts uh how do i put it mostly file handling is done using um consoles okay it's because it's easier you don't have to repeat things so i could be doing it here i could just say open that's the console so i could just say open the name of the file and blah 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 but because we are working on scripts just for the purpose of saving it i'm going to comment it out so down here oh sorry down here i'm going to um read okay so um i'm going to read oh i closed it i'm going to open the file location so i'm going to read this database.txt file okay so i'm going to say open so currently it's opened in this case it will be opened when i run the code so when it runs i'm going to say db dot read so if you say read or let's start with read lines no let's start with read if i say db dot read and i say maybe r equals to db dot read and i print r if i print r what is going to give me is it's going to give me um not readable sorry i opened it in an append mode so i should open it in a read mode okay all right so if i open it in the read mode and i run it it's going to give me all the data line by line okay that's for db.read if i see db.read line okay it's going to give me the first line okay read line if i say db.read lines it's going to put it inside a list okay it's going to give me everything inside a list like this okay so it's pretty much it's just it's not anything complicated it's very interesting and um Personally, I think it's a powerful tool. Most people don't utilize it because of databases and stuff, but it's very powerful. So one thing you have to take note of is um, the mode. So basically you open, or let me say the schema is this way. You say open like this, okay? Then you give it the file name, file name like this, and then you give it the mode, okay? like this so the mode can comprise of x um a x is for creating okay a is for appending mode w is for writing mode so if i say write it's going to overwrite everything if i open it in the right mode instead of in the append mode it's going to clean whatever that's inside the data and it's going to rewrite everything for me okay so write mode we have r for read mode right read mode and um I already showed you x here right x is for um great uh, what's the name adding a read and a write um permission to it yeah so that's basically all i want you to know about file handling and see you next time